Well, welcome everyone. I see that it's 12 o'clock, so let's get the show started. We have a wonderful uh, presentation for you today. Susan Mill from uh, Entrepreneur Source is here to talk about why you should consider franchising. It's a, a viable alternative, perhaps, for you rather than starting your own business. Of course, it is starting your own business, but it's with support. So I'll let uh, Susan talk all about that. But before we get started, I wanna talk to you a little bit about SCORE. SCORE is a nationwide nonprofit organization, and this is being brought to you by the Minnesota chapter of SCORE. Uh, we offer free confidential uh, mentoring, uh, our chapter has nearly 90 volunteers standing by waiting to help you move your business forward. Our chapter was recently recognized as a district chapter of the year. We're very proud of that. In the last 50 years since SCORE was started, it's assisted over 11 million clients. So where in the, in the process can we help you? Well, many of our clients call us when they're thinking about getting started. And that's actually the best time because we can help you identify whether your business is a viable option or not. Are you going to make money? Or whether you have started a business and you realize that you need a little help, whether it's in marketing or sales or finance or you know getting some money uh, for your business, we can help you there. Or we can help you grow your business. Or lastly, if you're thinking about selling or closing or perhaps the alternative, buying a business, you might consider contacting us to uh, hook you up with a mentor who can get you through that process as well. We have a team dedicated to that. We encourage you to go to our website, minnesota.score.org. There you can request a mentor. There are two buttons to request a mentor. You can find a workshop or webinar. We have, a, we have weekly webinars and I hope you sign up for them all because yesterday we had a wonderful webinar on networking. And if you weren't there, you missed a great one. We can, uh, you can lock, locate podcasts that are on there, recordings that we have from uh, previous uh, sessions or other resources. So we have templates of all kinds on our website. So please consider visiting our website, minnesota.score.org. And lastly, I'd like to thank our sponsors and community partners. You'll notice many of these are banks. If you come into these banks with a SCORE mentor, there's a better chance that you're going to be listened to because there are, um, they know that you've been through some of the questions that we have and the, um, the process. So it will often help you uh, get further in the banks. So without further ado, Susan, if you turn on your video, that would be great. Uh, Susan is an entrepreneur, a coach and a speaker, and she can help you explore some options relative to business. So welcome, Susan. Thank you so much, Diane. And uh, if we can just go back to the first screen for a second. Um, Diane's gonna be helping me with the screen, uh, moving the screens. But um, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, I would appreciate the connection. And um, I have um, lots of uh, resources on my website. Uh, I mean, on my LinkedIn, and you can also go to my website, which is listed under my contact information. But if I can help you in any way, I, I'm really passionate about helping people get into business. I've been an entrepreneur for 17 years, started my first business. Um, I mean, I've been on a franchisee for uh, 21 years, but an entrepreneur for 37 years, started my first business at uh, 28 years old. I was the largest wireless agent here in Tampa Bay. Matter of fact, I had a location in Sarasota as well as uh, St. Pete, Clearwater and Brandon. I had four stores with 42 employees, did about seven and a half million in sales. You might remember the car phone, that's when cell phones were installed in the car. And when I sold it after 17 years, I started exploring franchises, didn't think franchising was for me, thought they were all food and retail and cost a lot of money. So today you're gonna learn what I discovered that you don't have to spend a lot of money to make a lot of money in franchising, especially service-based franchises or lower investments. 
I am going to give some examples today. So I'd be happy to share with you some specifics. Um, and uh, I was just looking at a chat that somebody says, so hopefully I'll answer your question and uh, regarding um, your experience in exploring franchises. But there's 4,000 franchises out there in 80 different industries. So my value is helping people to narrow down their options. And um, we at the Entrepreneur Source, since we are a franchise, help to make that selection. My services are free because we get paid by the franchise company. So I just want to share with you probably the first franchise matchmaker maybe that you've ever met. But <laughs> I'm uh, very experienced with being an independent business owner as well as a franchisee. So any way that I can assist, uh, I, I'd like to be of value. And I can also assist with uh, financing options as well. So now we can go to the second slide. Thanks, Diane. So I thought you might find this fun. Uh, this research shows that entrepreneurs are happier and healthier than employees. I think, you know, when people feel that when the business is struggling, maybe they're not so happy, but like in any business, you have the highs and lows, but the idea is that you have control of your destiny. And I call that a priceless possibility. So I guess for me, being an entrepreneur, most of my life, I'd say I'm happier and healthier than, than if I hadn't gone this path. But I don't necessarily think self-employment is for everyone. So we're going to really review what it takes today. All right, Diane, we can take the next slide. So when we talk about franchising, we're going to take a look at what kind of income you want to achieve. What is the lifestyle you'd like to have? Uh, what wealth means, we're going to define that for you. And of course, one of the reasons to own a business is to grow it and sell it and have equity. Uh, people don't think about that at the beginning of starting a business. But if you've ever read Stephen Covey's, uh, you know, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, figure out what you want the end result to look like and then work backwards. And so maybe growing your business so you can sell it or bring on other family members and have a legacy. What kind of support is provided by a franchise? Um, the education you get in, in exploring franchises, the training provided, and having a proven business model. And for me, leaving the wireless business and starting another business in an industry that I don't have any experience in, I wasn't sure how I could do that. Franchising allowed me to make that transition. Okay. Um, so we have, every, I think a lot of companies have acronyms, and in our industry, we call it ILWI which stands for your income, lifestyle, wealth, and equity. And you can use this model uh, in, in really developing your own independent business. And then this will really give you clarity and a start of a roadmap in, in developing your business idea, okay? So what kind of income do you wanna have? And I, and I, I ask this question a lot of my clients and they took a look, look at what they've earned in corporate America and they sort of use that as a starting point. But I'm going to ask you to think big because one of the reasons to own a business is to have unlimited income potential. And I will tell you that most of my clients feel that they'll, they'll be happy at a certain amount of money. But if you, if you make extra money, what do you want to do with that? Do you want to leave that for your children? Do you want to give to charities? Uh, maybe you want to use it to get a second home. So really thinking through what your, your, like your income to look like, even the first year, second, third year, and that should be part of your business plan, but also your vision of what, what you want in having a business. Thank you. Next. And then lifestyle. This is my favorite slide in the fact that a lot of clients, if you don't want to work evening and weekends, then maybe looking at businesses or starting a business where you're not going to have to work evening and weekends. I didn't realize in the wireless business, how, how involved I'd have to be over the holidays. So for 17 years when I owned that business, really didn't get a chance to really take off during the holidays. So I was really excited when I got into a franchise that I have that flexibility. And actually I'm taking off uh, the, the week of Christmas and I couldn't have done that in my wireless business because that was a busy time for me. I'm not saying that's for everyone, but really think that through, you know, what kind of lifestyle that you want to have, okay? Next slide. Um, wealth is important because part of owning a business is growing your wealth portfolio and what you'd like for that to look like. So sometimes, you know, having to give up on what you saved to get started will help you grow a bigger uh, wealth and net worth as you go forward. 
And uh, your net worth, knowing what your net worth is also is important in getting funding too. Okay, next slide. And we talk about equity, which is growing your business and selling it, which also can contribute to your net worth and really taking a look at the next 10 or 20 years. And the run of the reasons in this slide we mentioned 10 years is because average franchise agreements are around 10 years and you have the option to either renew it or you sell it before the 10 years. Some of the more, the higher investments, um, some of the automotive franchise, you might be familiar with a company like called Meineke. Some of these franchises will have a 20 year uh, agreements, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay for 20 years. You can always sell it before that time. Okay, next slide. So obviously you have choices. This is a good uh, visual of your crossroads. Do you start your own business? Do you buy an existing business or do you invest in a franchise? And so today I hope that I dispel some of the misperceptions about franchising and help you, if, if, if it's not for you, help you to understand uh, the roadmap that it does provide you and the support as Diane mentioned earlier. Next slide. So this is really important to ask yourself these questions in exploring a franchise. Are you willing to follow a system? Uh, I always say the word system stands for uh, saving yourself time, energy, and money. So that's one of the advantages of it. Now, are you willing to work hard? I think that's true for any business. Um, you know, I've had clients say to me that, you know, I've worked really hard in corporate America, but I really don't want to work that hard going forward. So I always think that's interesting. If you work that hard for somebody else, why you wouldn't want to do that for yourself. But you know, if you're not willing to work hard, then you know, I would say self-employment isn't for you. Um, do I have access to startup capital? It's fascinating to me when people start exploring, whether it's franchises or existing businesses, or even starting their own business, this is really the first step, understanding what you can afford. What can I get funded for? You know, when you buy a house, don't you want to get pre-qualified for a mortgage to make sure you're looking at houses that you can, um, you know, that you can afford? So with franchising, because the high success rate of many of our franchise companies that we recommend, there is a SBA funding where you can get up to $150,000 with no collateral, but credit score is important in any kind of access of funding. So you do need to have a credit score of 710 or better. For a veteran, um, uh, my military clients, uh, 685, and then you put 10% down. So for service-based businesses, that's going to more than cover your franchise fee and working capital the first year, and it can even give you a salary to pay yourself. Um, but in looking at funding, and SBA helps you with this as well, um, want you to also have enough money to support yourself. So you can get a loan to help pay your uh, bills during the startup phase. We also have a program we call a dream loan where you can get up to $350,000, no collateral, which means you don't have to put the equity if your home up as collateral with 20% down. Whether these two programs would you could qualify for your independent business, I've not done that before. Usually you have to have experience in the industry, but with franchising, it's not a problem. Um, are your family and friends supportive? Um, I think it's important that you that you, you your family is supportive um, with your friends. For me, when I got in the wireless business, uh, nobody thought it was a good idea. Nobody had ever even heard of a car phone. They were really surprised that I left a, a great paying job to start a wireless business. So I think you have, you know, I think it's it's important to have your spouse on board. I don't know about your friends because unless they're going to loan you the money. Um, I'm not sure what difference that makes, but I will say once I had four stores and 42 employees, everybody was very supportive of me. So I think you have to live your own dream and, and understand that when you're making changes, sometimes people get uncomfortable because they're not in a place to change. So, but I do think your spouse has to be on board. <laughs> um, and then will you do whatever it takes to ensure success? Um, you have to sometimes maybe work later than, than you know, after five o'clock, if that's your time that you like to stop working. So sometimes you have to do whatever it takes. So remember to understand and really map out your criteria. What are your income, lifestyle, wealth, and equity goals? Okay. Um, hopefully this is a nice uh, surprise for you about how people feel about their franchise and whether they would do it over again. 
I always love to ask people, if you know what you know now, what would you have done differently? I think that, that most people um, maybe would have um, started the, the first you know, six months. They might have done some things differently, but that's part of the learning curve, isn't it? Uh, interesting that 78% of franchises would recommend their franchise and that over 80% of franchisees rate their franchise as good or very good or excellent. When you do your due diligence on a franchise, you are able to talk to as many people as you want in that franchise to learn about the business. And then also you can decide whether this makes sense for you after talking to people. So I think that allows you to do the, your due diligence uh, versus when you start an independent business, you can't really interview your competition or I'm not sure how much they'd share with you if you did, okay? So franchising is regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. So when you look at a business opportunity, a business opportunity can be a license, but the difference is it won't have a franchise disclosure document and they won't disclose to you how many people invested and how many people that left, but franchising will. So in many cases, people feel that's a safer investment because they can learn all about it before they uh, invest the money. And they really are giving you a roadmap to follow. And that's when they call it a proven business system, but it's a roadmap that you follow and you can make it your own. The, you get to learn about all the training and ongoing support that you have. It is being in business for yourself and not by yourself. Um, you do have the ability to sell your franchise in most cases. Um, uh, there are some instances like with Chick-fil-A, it's a little bit different business model, but most franchises you can grow and sell it. We're going to talk about, you know, the, the payments, the franchise fee, your royalties and advertising fees. You get to learn what do you get for those uh, fees that you pay. Um, because we're regulated by the Federal Trade Commission, um, the way you get earning information is by not only talking to franchisees, but in the franchise disclosure document, they'll have earning information. Some franchises have exclusive territory. Uh, my franchise, the Entrepreneur Source, were virtual. So we do have some virtual options, which is great because if you'd like to work from anywhere or work with clients all over the country. And as I mentioned, the average franchise agreement is generally 10 years and then a renewal fee. But again, you can sell it before that 10 years. Okay. Let's look at some franchise examples. This is probably what you really like, tell me about some franchises. I hear that a lot. Diane and I talked about it. She's encouraged me to really uh, open up the kimono and show you uh, lots of uh, different ideas. So this is a, a brand that I wanted to show you because they represent so many different brands. So there's many concepts like premium service brands that they have multiple brands under their umbrella. Well, what is the advantage of that? Part of it is you know, the economies of scale, sharing best practices, utilizing the best technology, uh, if you have franchisees in your market that are already in other brands, you could do a lot of cross referrals because you see this is very uh, home services related. So, and then if you don't have other brands in your market, you can become a multi-brand owner. Next slide, please. Next. Sorry. Yep. Okay. There we go. So um, this is the CEO founder of premium service brands, but he talks about uh, his vision of, of being part of this uh, group of brands. Um, and I think at the end of the day, when you're exploring franchises, you get to meet the team that supports each brand. Um, and so this is maybe a different concept than you had thought about before. Uh, most, like my franchise, we're sort of a standalone brand, but being part of a, a group of brands might be of interesting to you if you want to expand and have multiple brands under your umbrella. Next slide. So this might really surprise you. And if you're thinking about starting something on your own, looking at the residential and commercial service industry, a $5 billion industry with very high margins and service-based businesses generally have higher margins than retail. That's why in a lot of times people get into retail, they'll have multiple locations, but not to say you can't have multiple territories you know, in a service-based franchise. Some franchises, you know, you, you're gonna have employees. Some will let you use subcontractors. And generally, as we discussed, service-based is a much lower investment. Usually that range is between 50 to $100,000. But as you add more employees, uh, and if you have to have vehicles, then that's gonna be a higher investment. 
Uh, most franchisors want you to have a six-figure income, whether that's low six figures or high six figures, that's really up to you. They generally all have some type of software that they provide you. And um, many franchises will have a, a call center uh, that your clients and that might even schedule appointments for you. And um, th obviously, this is not just true for premium service brands, but obviously they're available throughout the US and Canada and have many home-based and semi-absentee options. But keep in mind, if you do a semi-absentee option, you're gonna to have to hire someone to manage your business. So should that be a partner that has some uh, skin in the game financially, or do you want to hire an employee? And then if the employee doesn't show up, what do you do if you're working a full-time job? So those are some of the things that you might wanna think through in considering semi-absentee. Um, and then obviously having the support. So your customers for premium home uh, brands, service brands are usually homeowners for many of these brands. Um, the, the, this is telling you your, your car target market uh, when you're looking for, for clients. And um, that's part of the, the other advantage of franchising. Uh, next slide. So another thing that they'll provide you is lead generation and um, how they, they get their clients and marketing. And I will tell you that the money that these most franchises spend on getting clients, especially doing a uh, website and SEO. And, and if you connect with me on LinkedIn, you'll see what my franchiser does. We do, they do about four postings a week for me uh, and keep me top of mind with my clients that I'm currently working with and even past clients. Those are some of that expense you'd have to have on your own. And usually a brand can do a lot more because they've got a lot more, your marketing fees are going towards branding. Okay, next slide. And then the marketing support. And this is all, you know, this is not just unique to premium service brands. Many franchises are all, you know, focusing on uh, getting clients via the internet uh, as well as networking too. Okay, next slide. So we're going to talk about one of their brands today uh, called Made Right. Okay. And obviously that's residential uh, cleaning. And what's great about this is it's generally Monday through Friday, uh, no evening, weekends, or holidays unless you choose. Uh, generally, you don't have accounts receivable with a cleaning service because they're gonna pay either in advance or the time of the cleaning. Very high repeat business and give you an opportunity to really scale the market. And you don't necessarily need to have multiple territories because you can just grow your, your brand within your a single territory. Uh, through the marketing efforts. And as you can see, 80% of the clients um, have um, do continue to use the service and um, you'll learn how they market and get clients. But this is really a, a franchise where they market and the clients come to you. Not to say you can't network, but this is really geared towards marketing and people calling you to schedule an appointment. And so they have a, a centralized co contact center. Okay. Um, this gives you some ideas of some of their, their marketing, um, whether you want to do door hangers, uh, you know, if you're, if you're networking, you're going to wear branded clothing. Um, you could do put uh, little signs up in certain areas that they allow you to do that. Um, direct mail. Um, there's, it, you, you have to market a variety of ways. Um, so people see you, whether it's on Facebook, you know, if you send them a direct mail, then they, then they see a, maybe uh, an advertisement on the internet. Um, if you, as you probably know with Facebook, whenever you start looking at something on your own online, then all of a sudden you're starting to get that advertising on, on Facebook, but it works really well. So you have to market a variety of different ways and then the franchisor will help you with that and they know the results. So they're, they're really doing more target marketing versus guessing at what works and doesn't work. Okay. So I thought this um, would be really helpful for you to see what you would see in a franchise disclosure document and how they, when they say the investment range, what does it include? And the reason there's a different range is every market's different. You know, if somebody's in Chicago, the cost of marketing might be more expensive than somebody, I'm working with somebody in Arkansas. Their marketing might be a little bit less expensive than somebody in Chicago. So that's why they give you a range. So you see the franchise fee at $65,000. With a maid service, you would need to have some vehicles, whether you pay cash or lease them. 
Um, you if having an office, what that would cost you to have an office, all the equipment and supplies, um, the insurance that you'd have. So they give you an estimate, obviously, because it depends on each location, uh, different signage that you would have because you'd like to have a location for a maid service so that way you're, they're not coming to your home to interview or pick up their supplies. Um, you know, grand opening expenses, training expenses, what your license will be, uh, professional fees for your accountant and attorney, and then additional funds as your working capital. So this is a really good snapshot of what your investment would look like the first year. So it's not a guessing plan. It's a, a plan that they know is validated by people that have done it before you, and they know what it takes to be successful and what kind of funding you have the first year. So the reason a lot of small businesses fail is they're underfunded, and that's one of the success reasons for franchising, because they're going to make sure you have the funds to be successful. But one thing that's missing on this slide, then you have to add in what you need to earn to be successful for, you know, in other words, what you need to have for to pay your bills during the ramp up time. Go ahead, Diane. <laughs> Um, this gives you an, uh, just a, an idea of what one franchise document looks like for an item 19. So it gives you ideas of different franchises and what the earning potential is. And um, I'm sorry, I got a pop up there. So just this is a, an overview, but I would say I would never make a decision on an item 19 on an earning claim. I would talk to franchisees in similar market areas to you, as well as um, maybe even similar background to you as well. But hopefully this will let you get an idea of what the income potential would be. And uh, hopefully you're impressed by that. Next slide. So one of the things that's exciting for me to share with you today is that when COVID hit in 2020, I was really concerned what my year was gonna look like. And I will let you know that it was one of my best years in this business. So. There are a lot of businesses are recession proof or recession resistant, but also goes to show you the strength of the franchise model during COVID and why they did so well across most industry um, areas because of the support that we provided each other to be successful and how rapidly they pivoted to whether it was to go on Zoom, whether it was to do delivery, but not sit there and wait to try to figure it out, figure it out from the very beginning. And by having a, a group of people to help, then you're like, again, help you know, business for yourself and not by yourself. So this will let you know the success in franchising and our continued growth, even in uh, this year and continues to provide jobs for people as well. And uh, we contribute to the economic growth of the US. And uh, I'm really proud to share this information with you because I think this is, you know, franchising sometimes doesn't get the attention that, that maybe it should and the success uh, here in the US in particular. Next slide. So I thought you might enjoy this slide because it talks about the different industries um, and it's more than just donuts, right? Um, which now they don't call Dunkin' Donuts anymore, it's called Dunkin'. <laughs> so it's more than just coffee. Um, but a percentage of um, my clients tend to look at more of the business services than the retail. But um, as you can see, they're, they're not all food, even though we have 24% here as, as food. And, um, but there are a lot of service-based businesses that sell services or products to the food industry. Um, so hopefully this, you know, and real estate is only 8.8%, which I thought was really fascinating, <laughs> especially here in Florida. Next slide. So why franchising? Is it a natural fit for anyone interested in business ownership? Well, you'd like to have most of the startup work done for you. So when you come out of training, you're implementing what you've learned. You've already got your website, your technology, your, your marketing. Um, you know, it, you're not getting ready to get ready. Once you come out of training, you're hitting the ground running. That's one of the reasons franchising has a faster success rate. You'll get the guidance from the franchisors and the franchisees as well. I reached out to the top franchisees when I joined the Entrepreneur Source and really wanted them to be my new best friend to help me understand how to ramp up faster and having an established brand and proven business model. But keep in mind, it's not the business doesn't make you successful. It's still up you, to you to do the implementation. Okay. Next. 
So what do you get for your fees? Besides the proven business model, the initial training, the ongoing support, business software, again, marketing campaigns and materials that are already put together for you. Maybe they provide you equipment and they get a better price because of the economies of scale. If it's retail location, help you look for a site uh, and help you with the build out assistance. What's their future vision and, and growth plans? And then as you've learned today, there's a variety of financing options, but SBA program likes franchising. The 10% down is unique to franchising because of their high success rate. And you also get funding within six weeks, which is pretty quick as well. So we do use a special bank just for franchising for this funding program. I've not found any local banks that do this low loan. This low, this is a low loan for them. And so they don't usually, well, they'll look at the 350, 350,000, but 150,000 is hard to find as an SBA program with 10% down. Next slide, please. Um, these are different levels in franchising. You know, single unit, you can be an owner operator. You've learned you can be a semi-absentee owner. You can even be an absentee owner, but I would definitely uh, advise to have a business partner if you're going to be just the investor and then have someone being your working partner with some skin and with some investment in the business. You can become a multi-unit owner, have multiple locations, multiple territories, and go, go, we call that working on the business, not in the business, manage the manager. Or you can be an area developer, a master, which allows you to develop a whole state if you want, or you could bring on franchisees and support them um, and that's another level to go. I don't see that much of the area development uh, programs as much anymore as the masters, people buying um, the whole state or even half the state and then dominating that state. Next slide. What to consider when you're evaluating a franchise opportunity? Okay, looking through the fog, right? <laughs> what is the market area that you're in? The franchisers do a lot of demographics. Sometimes they won't wanna open a market unless they had a population of 250,000 or more. Some franchises require 500,000 population or more. So they understand what the market looks like. I have someone in a, in a sort of a rural market in Arkansas. So I having to find franchises that are virtual for him or um, that will look for a, a smaller population sizes. Um, what is the company history? Um, you'll be able to see their financial statements in the franchise disclosure document. So it's really full disclosure. What's the level of investment, the training and support they provide. So when you do your research, you're learning about all this. And, and so it really is an educational experience, being able to disclose to you what your territory would be, what are the royalties, what are you getting for the royalties, what are the restrictions? Some, um, we used to have a restriction here. Um, you didn't have it in Sarasota and Manatee County, but we used to have it in Hillsborough and Pinellas County. You had to have a license to do painting. That's no longer the case. That changed in 2021. But, you know, there are different restrictions. Some uh, handyman franchises or handy woman franchises or handy person franchises, uh, they require a general contractor's license. Um, is this a good fit for you? Was this something you'd be excited to do? And then what is their exit strategy? Okay, next slide. So we, I said this several times during the presentation that you're in business for yourself and not by yourself. When I had my wireless business, I felt like I was alone on an island. And I really do like having being part of a team and a group of like-minded people uh, in my organization. So I think the culture here in franchising, what I understand from my clients is a lot better than in some corporate America companies. Next slide. So the key to finding the right franchising is really de de starting with your criteria and that's your ILWI. What is the income goal, your lifestyle, wealth and equity? People usually say, I'll figure that out as I learn, but that's important to start thinking about it and defining it. Uh, getting the education, learning about different franchises so you can do a comparison of contrast. Profiling is we do free behavioral assessments and we share that information with you and we focus on your driving forces because that way if you're if you're if these franchises fulfill your driving forces, that's what's going to give you enjoyment every day. Validation talks about it, talking with franchisees, then and again, selection is looking at a variety of opportunities, but narrowing it down to your final choice and then creating that success. Okay. Okay. So 
back to uh, that. That was that actually brought us to the questions uh, section. But before we get there, I want to reinforce if you're interested in finding a mentor. Uh, who can help you go to our website, minnesota.score.org. And thank you all for coming. This is not over. Susan still has more that she wants to share with you, but you will be getting a survey if you could take a moment and fill in that survey. So uh, Susan, uh, we did have, uh, you had seen a question earlier and I think you, you effectively answered it whether or not uh, you could have a, a a franchise and really not be there. And as you said, well, somebody's got to be there. <laughs> so you'd have to hire someone. Gustav uh, has a, a good question. Today's employment market has changed. Uh, where is it somehow more uncertain to, where it is somehow more uncertain to find employees? How is this taken into account for the franchise market? Well, that's a great question. And I'm glad you asked that because um, I have been showing franchises that don't have as many employees. Um, you know, so I say low investment with, with few employees, what my clients are focusing on. Some franchises do um, use subcontractors, so you don't have to have any employees if you like that model. Um, it's really a personal preference. And then I have some clients that really enjoy uh, building teams and being a leader. So they, they really do want to have employees. But a lot of franchises help you with that. Um, they, they actually will do some screening for you and then, then filter them out for you and then let you decide who you want to hire. More and more franchises are getting involved in the employee aspect of it and usually have um, relationships and, and, and uh, accounts with the different brands that like, um, like ZipRecruiter uh, and maybe LinkedIn Recruiter. And they're, they're mining uh, resumes and, and finding people for their franchisees. But you get the final choice. But that is a big focus now in, in the franchise industry is helping you find and get and keep good employees. Good question. Is there any way of determining uh, how much more successful franchise franchises are rather than starting your own business? Um, well, I don't think it's changed in all these years that the success rate for independent businesses has been low. And I hate to say that because I did well for 17 years, but I will tell you everybody that started when I started, nobody was around 17 years later. I wouldn't discourage anybody. I, I, I always, you know, I, but I do think, you know, business ownership was so easy, everybody would do it. It's one of the reasons I gravitated toward franchising. The franchises that we work with have an 80% or higher success rate, but here's most important to know about franchising is that they are doing an award experience. It should not be a sales process. In other words, as much as you're looking at them to make sure they're a good fit, they're also disclosing to you what it takes to be successful, to be sure that you're a good fit. And I have had clients get turned down to be a franchise with different brands. They just didn't show up the way the, the franchisor wanted. And, you know, and it really has to be a, a culture fit and also making sure that you're gonna represent the brand properly. I will tell you something that might surprise you. There is a, a, a brand out there um, that requires, uh, it's a branding group, not premium service brands, but there's a branding group that requires um, a 35 year uh, franchise agreement. And initially um, all of us here at the Entrepreneur Source were sort of surprised that they had such a long franchise agreement. But the more we discussed it with them, uh, we found out that they really wanted their franchisors not to you know, just not renew and disappear because they've, they've opened in a market and created a presence. So they have a program where they help you to sell if you decide to exit. And they had two franchisees that are actually passing their business off to their children who are signing another 35 year agreement. So wow. it's almost like a house is how I compare it. You get a mortgage for 30 years, but that doesn't mean that necessarily you're gonna live in that house for 30 years. You know, you could sell it and get another house. So they just don't want anybody to close their business down in any market after their agreement's over. They want it to continue. So I think it's an interesting philosophy. And I won't be surprised if we don't start seeing some of that change in the franchise industry, because I think it makes a lot of sense. It sounds like it does. Gustav has another question. Uh, what is the general budget to choose a franchise, like franchise professional attorney for review of the agreement, travel, et cetera? 
Well, that, that, that's a good question. And that's why when you see the, the franchise disclosure document on what the investment is, that's why they have the varies. So because every franchise attorney charges differently. But I'd say, you know, you're looking at a franchise attorney, um, it, you know, it can be anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. What I usually recommend to my clients is use an attorney that another franchisee has already used because they've already reviewed the agreement. So mm -hmm. you'll be a lesser cost for you. Most franchises won't change anything in their franchise agreement because if they change it for you, they have to change mm -hmm. it for everybody in the system. So, but not to say, I would say get a franchise attorney so you can better understand what you're committing to. So that would, but I would tell you to read the franchise agreement yourself. Don't hire an attorney and pay them to read it. You need to read that agreement as well. So, uh, so an anonymous uh, would like to know, is there a, a place or an organization where you can find people who are interested in franchising and who would want to partner with someone? Um, that's a really fun question for me. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, uh, I think it's really difficult to have a partner. I've had partners in my career um, as a business owner. I, I think it's challenging enough to have a partner and to have a partner you really don't know. Right. Um, I don't know how that would really work. Um, I, I know I, I did talk to someone that, that said that happened, that the franchisor did find a partner for them, and but that's not what I do. And um. I, I wouldn't really recommend it. I'd rather you find a partner that you know and like than somebody that you know you don't even know. I, I think that would be challenging. Something like a dating service would just- Well, that's what I was thinking too, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. This is like a marriage. And uh, so you'd like to really know that partner pretty well before you uh, get wedded to them in a business, for sure, because that can get very sticky when you have to uh, dismantle that, I would think. What do you think, Susan? Yeah, no, I think that's a good analogy. It's like dating, I mean. <laughs> mm, yes, somebody seems uh, really great until you move in together. <laughs> Uh, that is the end of our questions, if you can imagine. For everyone, of course, this has been recorded. I should have said that. And you will be getting a copy of the recording. I've put Susan's contact information again in the chat. So if you'd like to just copy that out and have it available to you, I suspect that Susan would be very happy to field any email questions that you have and or phone questions and uh, she'd be happy to talk to you about that. Am I correct, Susan? Yeah, absolutely. Anything I can do to assist, I appreciate that. Yeah, I I hope that you would um, you all would consider uh, franchising as an alternative, something to explore in any event, whether or not you go with it. It's another option relative to starting a business because starting a business is difficult and this can help you get over that uh, difficult period. Uh, it's not a guaranteed income by any sense, uh, but at least you know that other people have uh, had this success with uh, their franchises. So are there any more questions? If you have any more questions, put them in the Q&A if you would, please. And if not, uh, then I think we will Thanks, Susan, for her information and her time and her expertise. And I look forward to seeing all of you again at our next webinar. We have webinars every Wednesday. If you want to go to minnesota.score.org and click on uh, webinars, you can see our upcoming webinars. We have a variety of them. Google My Business is back again in December. Uh, and um, the SBA is actually coming relative to uh, funding for um, that our friend Ian who came to visit, or maybe not our friend, but Ian who came to visit with his all of his wind and water. Uh, the SBA will help you uh, identify what is available to you. So there are no more questions. I want to thank you again, Susan. You did a fabulous job as usual. You have been here before and did a, a wonderful job in the past. And thank you so much for coming. And thank you all the participants who, who came as well. Thank you all.
Thank you for the opportunity, Diane. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.